Welcome to another how-to video in Onshape. Uh, for this video, we're going to go through the support bracket for the mass property analysis activity. So I'll open my mass props, go ahead and create my empty document called support bracket. I'll go ahead and start off my sketch, and the same thing we've been doing is I'm going to start this out as one big solid chunk. So we'll start off with a two-point rectangle, and let's look at our part. We have nine inches from side to side, and an overall height. Uh, we don't have anything that gives us the overall height. We've got some dimensions we can put together. So we know that this floor, the base plate, is a half an inch, and this tower that comes off of it is three and a half, so we must have an overall height of four. Um, we're going to draw it up with that being our assumption, and we'll take a look at the proportions later and see if we're right. So I'm going to do a 9 by 4 for right now. So 9 inches wide and 4 inches tall. Go ahead and click on front so I can look at it, and proportionately we're looking good so far. So I'll go ahead and isometric, finish the sketch, turn off my work planes, and go ahead and extrude that. How much? Um, five inches. Okay, so we do have at least an overall width. So we've got five inches from side to side. So a blind depth of five inches. Okay, so that's good. So we've got one great big chunk. Um, okay, so I'm actually going to put a new sketch now on the front, squared up, and I'm going to get rid of this section here, the middle, and that one. Uh, and I am going to use the mirror again. So I'm going to create a rectangle. Uh, actually, I'm going to do it just a little bit differently. So I'm going to create a rectangle, um, another one, and then one kind of here in the middle. Okay, so that's going to be the three areas that I want to remove. Um, now, I do have a little trick. All of these across the bottom, I would like them to line up with each other. Um, so I'm going to do a horizontal, and I'm going to click on endpoints. So this one is going to be horizontal to that one, and that one's going to be horizontal to this one. So if I hit escape and drop that horizontal tool, now what I've done is make them all level to each other. Um, some software packages have a collinear tool, um, or one that will make them level with each other, but that horizontal will work just as well. Okay, so what else? Um, the equal sign. So I'm going to find this little equal sign, and I'm going to say the left and the right will be equal to each other. Now whatever happens to one will happen to both of them. So it's kind of like a mirror and kind of not. Um, we'll just go with it from there. Okay, so what else have we got? We've got two inches, half inch, four inch. Let's go with that first. So let's throw that two inch on there. So from here to here, that's two. Let's throw that half inch in there. So from here to here, it's supposed to be half. And then from this full bottom one, it's going to be four. Well, everything has turned black from side to side, which would give us the assumption that this is a half an inch. Well, let's check it. So I'm going to hit escape, and it's always been running down here. We have this little tape measure. As you click on one thing and then another, it'll tell you what it is. So the measuring distance is 0.5, which should also give us two here. So if I just click on this one line, it will say two inches. Okay, so everything looks good so far. Um, and the floor plate was a half. So from the base to here, we're running a half an inch. Okay, everything black, everything looks good. So isometric, end the sketch, extrude, and we're going to punch all three of those as a remove all the way across, so through all. Okay, that's taking care of a lot of it for us. Um, let's go ahead and take care of these holes next. So a new sketch, take a look at it from the right. Um, we used the hole tool last time. Let's just go ahead and use the diameter tool this time. So I'm just going to use a circle and place it on there. I'll use a dimension to locate it from the side. So they're telling me that that is two and a half inches from the side to the center point. And then up and down. We are two inches from the top down. So from here to here, oops, here we are two inches. Okay, so now it's a diameter that we need. We're looking somewhere for the diameter. So diameter 1.5, two holes. So I'll click on it and 1.5 diameter. Okay, so everything looks good. 
going to isometric and finish our sketch. So we're going to extrude and we're actually going to cut both holes at the exact same time. So cut or remove and through all should hit both of them at the same time. Awesome. Um, how about the chamfers next because they're all the same. So um, actually let's do that last. So let's do that as an edge treatment. So it's this slot that's going to be next. So I'm going to do a new sketch here. Let's straighten it up. And I'm going to work on one side and then kind of mirror that over. Um, I do want a chance to use the slot tool in here and it's underneath offset. So this slot tool works a little bit different than it does in some other software packages. Now I can build my own slot um, just out of a rectangle and two circles. So I can build my own, but the software has that built in and I'd like to see if I can't figure out how to use that. So I'm going to delete that and see if I can't do it. So I think it works just off of a line. So I'm going to place a line on here, make sure it's straight up and down, and I'm going to get all the dimensions on there that I need. So it's one and a half and two. So let's get those two dimensions on there. So from here to here, we are one and a half inches. We are a full length of two. And then from side to side, we're one inch in here to here we are one inch okay so I've done everything right this one line will turn into the slot for me so again I'm gonna change from offset to the slot tool and I'm just gonna pick that line as soon as I do it should automatically pop up a slot that wants a new diameter so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that diameter and I'm double clicking that diameter and it says a radius of 0.375 I think it wants a full diameter so 0.375, I'm just going to hit enter. I think that's going to be incorrect. It is. That's too skinny. So I see it had the diameter symbol on it. That's where I saw that. So it's 0.375 times 2. And that should give me the diameter. Now that looks proportionately correct. So we have an R, 0.375. We need to turn that into a diameter for the way that on shape uses a slot. Okay, sweet. I don't want to do it again. So I'm just going to set up a mirror line. I'll go ahead and turn that construction and let's mirror it. So we'll send that, highlight it. Oh, I forgot. I need to do it backwards. So mirror, pick the line, pick the objects, and done. Sweet. So finish that sketch, put it back into isometric, extrude, and I should be able to kind of get it poking through that hole. So that one and that one. Blind turn to, th uh, let's do remove first, and then through all. Okay, so we'll do some rotating. Looks good. I'm happy with that. Now we can go ahead and do our chamfers, and it says that it's a one inch by one inch, which means 45 degree. So grab the chamfer tool, I'll type in one, enter, and I want equal distance, and since it's the same rise as it is run, then I can just start clicking on edges, and it'll start knocking them off, and I should be able to get them all. Grab those, grab this one, oops. So I accidentally picked something I didn't want. You can either pick it again, or sometimes you can just pick this X over here to get rid of it. So I want that, it tells me I've now got five, and I want that one, oops, it just says plus five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I don't know what that plus five means, but anyway. Okay, so we've got them all, everything looks good. I select okay. We'll put it back into isometric, and yes, everything looked good. So this 3.5 plus 0.5 was right. If we assume that that was a full height of 3.5, so if I had changed that back to 3.5, we would have seen that these circles are too close to that bottom. Um, so that would have been an incorrect assumption. So we got that part right. Is there anything else we did? Um, no, we didn't make any other assumptions, so that was the one. Um, so I can see looking in there is that there's a tiny, tiny little spot there where that slot's peeking out. I can see that one there. And I can see the same on mine. So that looks good. Uh, last thing is to make it aluminum 6061. So come down here, right click, assign material. I'll change none and start typing in aluminum. A L U M. And let's see if we can't scroll and find 6061. And there it is, aluminum 6061. Go get my mass properties. I've got it back as it's a finished product and back to when it was a solid chunk. Sweet, that's everything for the support bracket.